folks, I am back. I feel a hell of a lot better. See, my eyes are blue again. No kidding. They were green. Get it? Yellow and blue make green. Duh. Yeah, my eyes were floating too, so. Whew, I feel more better. More better, more better, more better. But anyway, with the birthdays being done, let's give a shout out. Additional shout outs. Already hooked up my good friends Johnny and his better half, Emma Montgomery. Um, absolutely phenomenal folks, I'm telling you. And then, my good friend, Alex Rooney, hooked him up, a badass crew dog, and he brought me beer from way up north. That's phenomenal. That is cool. Definitely earned a shout out. And uh, how about a shout out to my good friend, Sarah Garan? Is it Garand? Garand? I can't remember. But I know you're an absolute sweetheart. A, I know you're a cop in jolly old England. Pleasure working with you. Pleasure meeting you over there. Always a pleasure keeping in touch with you. Thought I'd give you a shout out. It's been a while. And I uh, hope you enjoy the show. And uh, you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate the weekend because that's exactly what I'm doing. That's right. Party hard, baby. Party hard, but safe and smart. Sarah, hope you're doing well. Love to hear from you soon. Um, I see you on the old song pop, and we'll send you a challenge. Bring it on back, because I've got every single American playlist unlocked, except for the Canadian ones, and that one's getting unlocked soon. But Sarah, you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well. Just celebrate the weekend. That's what I'm doing. Mmm. Phenomenal beer. All right. Finally, I have a, another awesome shout out. My man, Kevin Sherman. He was a cop in jolly old England. He's living in Algonquin, Illinois. Like I said, Illinois has got a lot of good people there. Johnny Bond, Brian Jasek. Um, my man, Kevin Sherman. My friend, Jessica Dickinson. She's from there. Um... I know there's a lot more, and I'm drawing a blank. My man, Matt Guesquire, is from there originally. A great man indeed, and a true diehard, wicked, hardcore Bears fan. A lot of Bears fans I know. They're good people. They're good creatures. But anyway, um, Kevin, I've been, he hooked me up with um, movie quotes all the time. Facts of, you know, movie facts of the day. He was my inspiration to have a TV show or movie of the day on this here show. He's a daily viewer, and I'm giving him a huge shout out because the guy is absolutely wicked awesome. And uh, he probably is well familiar with New Glarus Brewing Company. Are you, Kev? Let me know, man. Because I, I, if I could just get my hands on some Founders Breakfast Stout, man, oh, that would be phenomenal. But anyway, Kevin, I made sure I got it right here. There's a lot of reading. Like I said, Kev. It can't rain all the time. But you know what? Sometimes it does. Most of the time it does. Especially down here in Yeehaw, Texas. Where it's damn near a desert. Yeehaw, Texas. Otherwise known as Western Louisiana. But anyway. Um, it's Kevin's favorite movie of all time. Released in 1994. The Crow. That's right. With Brandon Lee. And I, it's so sad. I did not know this. But Cameron Diaz was actually offered the role of Shelley. But turned it down because she didn't like the script. You little dummy. What the hell were you thinking? It turned out to be a huge hit. Hmm. Cameron Diaz is hot though. Still. But anyway. Um, the saddest thing. Remember. Brandon Lee was accidentally killed on the set. Really, really sad. But um. There were actually some scenes filmed after he passed away. Really sad. How did he die? Well, Reverend Dr. B knows. Because he died during a mishap on the set. A scene required a gun to be loaded, cocked, and then pointed at the camera. Because of the close range of the shot, the dummy cartridges loaded had real, blast, real brass caps, bullet, but no powder. After the cut, the props master... Not the arms master. He had left the set for the day. He dry fired the gun to get the cock off. <laughs> get the cock off. <laughs> nice. Knocking off the projectile bullet into the barrel of the gun. 
The next scene to be filmed involving that gun was the rape of Shelley. The gun was loaded with blanks, which usually contained double or triple the powder of a normal cartridge to make a loud noise. Brandon Lee entered the set carrying a bag of groceries containing an explosive blood pack. And the script called for Fun Boy to shoot Eric Draven as he entered the room, triggering the blood pack. The bullet that was struck in the barrel was blasted at Lee through the bag he was carrying, killing him. The footage of his death was subsequently developed and used as evidence in the investigation into his death. And as part of the lawsuit settlement, the footage was later destroyed. Ugh. Just horrible. Because remember, his father was killed too. In a similar tragic circumstance. Back in July 20th, 1973. Bruce Lee, that's right. Brandon Lee was only 27 years old. Awful. Absolutely awful. But anyway, a phenomenal quote... And I'm going to quote it. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carried their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, something so bad happens that a terrible sadness is carried with it, and the soul can't rest. Then sometimes, just sometimes, the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. Amen to that. Sarah quoted that one in the movie. Absolutely phenomenal and spiritual quote uplifting and truth baby so keep that in mind the crow phenomenal movie if you've never seen it you have truly been cheated you have cheated yourself I'll tell you that right now but with that said let's get to the celebrity birthdays that's right and uh we'll start it right off with he's 50 years old today and i'm surprised he hasn't decided to continue boxing Evander, the real deal, Holyfield, that's right, Mr. Man, who got, who sadly was most famous for having his ear bitten off by that crazy, psychotic goofus, doofus, goon, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, yeah, Mike Tyson, you little bastard, alright, he'd whoop my ass, I don't hate girls, but Evander, the real deal, Holyfield, is 50 years old, wow, Will not be surprised to see him still boxing. What else is he going to do, right? On this day, 1945, phenomenal actor was born. John Lithgow. Yep. Loved him in the Twilight Zone, the movie, back in 1983. Filmed in 82. And, of course, he was always a more of a drama actor. But Third Rock from the Sun, he took a turn for comedy. And it was absolutely phenomenal in that show. He's 67 today. Wow. Another one at 67 years old today happens to be Gene C. Genie? Is it Gene or Genie? I don't know. Genie, I do believe. Genie C. Riley. And she made a very famous country song back in 1969 called Harpy Valley PTA. Yep, you see it on Song Pop all the time. Those that play that, like I do. Uh, squeeze me. Folks, if you play Song Pop on the old Facebook, like I do. Remember, I'm like a heroin addict on that damn app. It's the funnest app I've ever played. Oh. Wow, foaming at the mouth. And uh, I dare you. Challenge me. God hates a coward. Bring it, folks. Bring it. All right. With that said, on this day in 1969, Trey Parker was born. He's 43 today. Who's Trey Parker, Reverend Dr. B? Well, simple. He's one of the co-creators of South Park and basketball with Matt Stone. Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Who would have known that South Park would have gone over a decade and still going strong? Absolutely incredible. Unbelievable, because a lot of people are like, oh, that, that show sucks. It's lasted longer than Danny Griffith's show. It's lasted longer than I Love Lucy. It's lasted longer than Dragnet. Ooh, I love Dragnet. Longer than Twilight Zone, Star Wars, Beverly Hillbillies, MASH even. Holy shit! How is a crazy cartoon like that so popular? Because we're a bunch of goofballs, folks. But you know what? It is a great show. South Park is crazy, and I love it. All right. So... On this day in 1968, speaking of crazy, he's 44 now. 
one of my personal all-time favorite comedians, Rodney Carrington. That's right. Most famous for Dear Penis. I don't think I love you anymore. You used to watch me shave. And now all you do is stare down at the floor or something like that. Dear Penis, I don't love you anymore. Yeah. Mm -mm. Empty as the brain cells of an average Yankee fan. That's a problem, folks. It's going to be a wicked long show today. But you know what? Because I'm celebrating. I haven't had a weekend in a couple weeks. And golly gee, I need one. So, we are going to bring out another beer. New Glass Brewing Company, Fat Squirrel. Mmm, Fat Squirrel, as opposed to Squirrel. Good roadkill. One deceptively spring-like winter day, Brewmaster Dan walked home from the brewery, sat down to dinner, and said, Boy, there's some fat squirrels out there. They're running all over the place. I think I should brew a fat squirrel nut brown ale. Deb agreed, and so was born another so another beer legend was born. There you go. 100% Wisconsin malt of six different varieties and pipe the natural toasted color to this bottle un, bottle condition, unfiltered ale. Clean hazelnut notes result from those carefully chosen barley hops, malts rather, hops from Slovenia, Bavaria, and the Pacific Northwest give fat squirrel its backbone. When the going gets tough, remember to relax a moment and enjoy the fat squirrel in your neighborhood. Mm. Proper beer opening technique. Oh, yeah. And my dog's trying to knock down the door. Shadow stop, you schmuck. Proper beer pouring technique right there. 45 degree angle right over the keyboard. Never spilled a drop pouring them. Oh, baby. Oh, boy. A little foamier than usual. Poured it a little too fast for the das boot. Yeah, like I say, cheers and beers all you processes say in Germany, compiles they say in Japan. Here we go. Wow. It's tough to say which one I like better. Because they're both absolutely splendid. Alex Rooney, you're a BMF, man. Thank you so much. On this day in 1932, the late great Robert Reed was born. Passed away in 1992 at the age of 59. Who's that, Reverend Dr. B? Well, hot diggity dog damn, that would be one Mike Brady from the Brady Bunch. Who, unbelievable, he was gay. Dude, he had Florence Henderson. She was pretty hot back in the day. She was a MILF. <laughs> On this day in 1876, passed away in 1948 at the age of 71. The late, great Mordecai, three-finger brown, legendary... Major League pitcher had three fingers, and boy, he was a badass. On his day, the birthdays are done. How about some random facts of the day on this day in 1953? The first jet con transcontinental nonstop scheduled service occurred. How, how cool is that? 80 years ago today, in 1932, Henry Ford gives the very his very first radio speech. Well, big whoop, right? On his day in 1853, the first flour mill in Hawaii began operations. This one's important to all of you. On this day in 1722, his first name was French. French C. Hopper, Hopfer patented the fire extinguisher. Wow, that is a huge, huge, huge invention right there. Thank you, French. Hey, who says the French are schmucks, right? The French are pretty freaking cool. And French proved it right there. On this day, 25 years ago today. Hey, remember, hey, folks, remember uh, October 19, 1987? No, I don't, Dr. B. What's up with that? Well, quite simple. That was Black Monday. That was the day that the Dow Jones Industrial dropped 508.32 points. 22% drop. That was the four times the previous record ever. Holy smokes. Can you imagine? Oh, 508 points. I remember Black Monday. Awful. On this day in 1980, now this is crazy. Steve McPeak rode a hundred and foot, a hundred and one foot nine inch tall unicycle. Folks, I tried riding a unicycle when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> didn't work out well, but I did not. 
Thankfully, I'd never um, shanked the nuts. That would have sucked. I don't know how people ride a unicycle. That's crazy. I can't do it. 101 feet, 9 inches. Good Lord. I'm scared at that height. And riding a unicycle? Forget about it. On this day in 1960, Mauritania became independent from France. Happy Independence Day, Mauritania. Outstanding. I'll drink to that. On this day in 1959, I did not know this. Florence Henderson, we just talked about her. She was 25 at the time. Now she was on. She was Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch. Yep, husband and wife. But uh, Florence Henderson actually joined the the t Today Show panel. I never knew she was on the Today Show. Now we know. Hot diggity dog damn. On this day in 1941. The first woman jockey in North America happened. Anna, Anna Lee Wiley from Mexico. Anna Lee Wiley? Mexican name? Really? I don't know. Hmm. Just saying. On this day in 1926, John C. Garand, or Garand, I don't know how it's pronounced. Is it the Garand? No relation to my good friend Sarah Garand. At least I don't think so. He's got one eye. She's got two. But he patented the semi autoret semi-automatic rifle a legend was born that day that's right this one's a cool one on this day 1919 the first distinguished service medal was awarded to a woe man that's a woman oh, you know on this day 1914 the u.s post office first used an automobile to collect and deliver mail dude automobiles had been around since 1885 thanks to the Benz. it took 29 years for you to learn to use an automobile? Really? Wow. Poor horses. This one is huge. On this day in 1879, that badass inventor, Thomas Alva Edison, demonstrated the electric light. Bye bye, gas lamps. Hello, electricity. On this day in 1849, Elizabeth Blackwell was the first U.S. woman to receive a medical degree. Huge milestone there. Dr. Blackwell, I salute you. And finally, on this day in 1781, this one is important to every American in the world. Sure, why not? Because there are people overseas and they are helping preserve our freedom. Because on this day, October 19th, in the year of my Lord, 1781... General Charles Cornwallis surrendered at Yorktown at 2 p.m. And the Revolutionary War ended. And America became a country. We beat the British. And I love you British folks. I do. And you folks are probably happy that we're no longer part of you anyway. Especially nowadays. But I'll leave that alone. But yes, we won the war for our independence. And became the United States of America. I'll drink to that. With that said, let's get to the movie of the day. And folks, before I say that, hey New York Yankees! Enjoy watching the World Series at home with my mm, Red Sox, who were 69 and 93 this year. Um, hey New York Jets! Quit flapping your man pleasers, talking all that trash and shit and garbage. That's all I gotta say, New York Jets. I got friends that are New York Jets fans that are a lot classier than that team. Okay? Today's movie of the day. Might as well go with some sleaze and cheese, right? Sure, why not, Reverend Dr. B? Ah, something weird video. You know I'm gonna get some weird shit with this. Bawanga Bawanga, baby. That's right. Look at that, huh? Mm. <clears throat> Squeeze me. Ultra sleaze and cheese movie. Look out, boys. The Ulama Alus. Yep. The legendary White Simons of Africa. A tribe of 50s era glamour girls who look like strippers in animal skins. Mm. They capture three male explorers who foolishly invade their secret plateau. Seeking a super suitable husband, the queen makes the guys fight the toughest gal among them. 
Fire God, take weak men. Queen, take strong men. But the other women object. She no burn ice men. We get husbands too. And a tribal cat fight quickly erupts. Cat fights. Hell yeah. A mad mix of stock footage and cheesecake. Bawanga Bawanga is utterly hilarious jungle style battle of the sexes. I mean, look at this, folks. You gotta love a movie like that. From 1951, okay? The movie's 61 years old. Absolutely incredible. Black and white movie with no important names other than the fact that it's important to Reverend Dr. B because I love my sleaze and cheese C movies. It ain't even worthy of being a B movie, but hey, it's all good. Yeah, warning, this program contains mild nudity, bad choreography, and sexy women speaking gibberish. Says it right there. Hell yeah. With that said, let's get to, oh, the babe of the day. And a big shout out to my man, Justin Dimmitt, daily viewer of my show since the beginning, January 17th in the year of 2012. I've done this show each and every day. He has watched each and every episode, has shared each and every episode, and the man hooked me up with my fedora, one of my very best friends. I worked with him in jolly old England. He shapes metal for a living. Sheet metal, BMF, Justin, damn it. Much love to you, brother. No homo. He's a fellow Masonic brother, by the way, and that is way cool. Us Masons, we're all about taking care of one another. All about charitable work. Charities, my friends. But anyway, he mentioned the lovely Kirsten Dunst, who was on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, for he is a huge Trekkie. Undoubtedly. Him and my good friend Stephanie Carpenter, both high, die-hard, wicked hardcore Trekkie fans. Hell, my wife's a Trekkie fan. She loves her Star Trek. But Kirsten Dunst, born April 30th, 1982. She is a cutie. No doubt about that. And she is the babe of the day. Justin, my friend, this is for you. And all those other great men out there. And women who appreciate beauty. Yeah, baby. She is cute. Definitely a cute one. And you know she has never gotten naked on camera. You gotta... Respect the woman that respects her privacy. Personally, I'd love to see the privates, but hey, you know what? Hats off. Hats off to th those ladies out there who are not stripping for the camera, too. You know? I'm not going to complain about it. Not at all. I got friends of mine who are class ladies and uh, good Christian ladies at that, which is definitely way cool. And, uh, Yes, I am a Christian. A corrupted Christian, but I'm a Christian. I'm not perfect. If I was perfect, I'd be playing third base for the Red Sox. But I do admire God's beauty of creating beauty like that. God, you are truly wicked awesome. That's all I gotta say. Ooh, she looks haggard there. But, you know what? What the hell? Why not? Oh, naturel. She looked a little beat up there. Ah, she looks a lot cuter there, though. Born April 30th, 1982. Hey, what day of the week did that fall on, Reverend Dr. B? Hmm, I'll figure it out right now. See, because April 30th, 1973, fell on a Monday. Therefore, 1977 was a Saturday. 1981 was a Thursday. 1982 was a Friday. She was born Friday, April 30th, 1982. Look it up. See if I'm right. Whoever chimes in and says, Yes, you're right, Reverend Dr. B. Or, You're wrong, Dr. B. Whoever chimes in with that, after looking it up, gets a shout out on my show tomorrow. Okay? There you go. That will let me know if you're paying attention or not. Now, I'm not big on redheads, personally. But... I would not kick her out of bed for eating crackers. Well, I think she's a natural blonde. Hell, I don't know. Hmm. Well, she's wet there. <laughs> not that kind of wet, you sickos. What does she have in her mouth? 
Is that a cigarette? Oh no, it's her finger. Never mind. Yeah, she got a finger on pointing to her mouth. Hmm. Oh, Reverend Doctor B, you're a bad, bad man. All right. So, show's been thirty nine minutes long now, and I'm starting to get a little buzzed. Hey, I told you I'm celebrating the weekend because thank you, Lord, I have one. Let's get to the song of the day. And we have got to wake you all back up since I've probably bored you all by now. We're going to make this one wild for today. Today's song is The Goof by the great Big J McNeely from 1952. This one will rock your socks off, knock your socks off. Hell, it's so wild it might knock all your clothes off. This one is crazy. Here you go. Enjoy. It's Friday. It's party time, baby. One of my all-time favorite sax blasters ever. Now, the great Big J. McNeely, born April 29, 1927. He's 85 years old, and he is still playing today, still rocking the house. Absolutely phenomenal. He's the guy that sits there. He's got this, he's got this gray goatee, kind of heavier scent guy, and he'll be, he'll be playing. Okay, he's playing standing up. He's still standing up, hunched over. He's got a microphone at the end of his saxophone. He's played... With uh, glow in the dark saxophones, all kinds of different color saxophones. There was a Wrigley Field in Los Angeles at one time. Not the one in Chicago, but there was a Wrigley Field in Los Angeles, minor league baseball player. In 1954, this guy played saxophone on his back and and went to first base to home plate playing while sliding on his back. This guy is an absolute animal. And he's still absolutely nuts today at the age of 85. God bless you, Jay McNeely. Thank you for keeping great music alive. This guy, I'm telling you, folks, Big Jay McNeely, look him up. You'll be blown away, literally. This is talking about kicking ass. Starting the weekend off with a bang. Because it's a party time, folks. Big J. McNeely is definitely starting off right. Oh, hell yeah! Man, oh man, folks. If that ain't awesome, I don't know what is. You know what time it is, right? Damn right, Reverend Dr. B. It's time to make like a fetus to head out. So everybody take care of a wicked awesome night and day. Peace be the journey. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Don't drink and drive my spirit. You drink or you might kill yourself or somebody else. And drinking and driving is dumber than the Yankees fan. And what's dumber than that is rooting for douchebag cocksuckers like Eli. Ow, I'm as good as Tom Brady. Manning or men slapping women. Things like that are just plain stupid. And don't forget, Tom, um, Eli Manning and Peyton Manning can buy three Super Bowl rings. Tom Brady, uh, by himself, by himself, squeeze me, three Super Bowl rings, he's as good as both of the man he's put together. I'm out of here, see you all tomorrow, have a look at awesome night day, talk to you later, bye bye, 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 hell yeah, high energy baby, that's what I'm talking about, way to go tigers, jetsicles, you're going down, down, damn it.